You want to learn how to generate passive income even while working your full-time job? Well, you know what? There's plenty of videos out there showing you how to do it, but this one's going to be different. And in this video, I'm going to highlight a real estate syndication case study showing you the entire process from the initial investment all the way to you exit with extra money. Now, we're going to cover the initial acquisition, the property management strategies, the value add improvements, and then the eventual sale of the property. By the end of the video, you're going to have a little bit better understanding of the real world potential of investing in real estate syndications. And if you're new here, I'm Dr. Jeff Anzalone. And if you don't really know much about passive income, do me a favor, download the free passive income guide with the link below the video. Now, for this case study, we're going to be looking at a hypothetical real estate syndication that actually goes out. You got the general partners and you got the limited partners. General partners, they're the ones that perform all the um, acquisitions, property management, that sort of thing. You and I are the limited partners. We're the passive investors. Well, this group, they go out and they purchase a 200 unit apartment complex. Now, they purchase it for 10 million bucks with a 20% down payment of two million dollars then they put 80 percent they finance that with the bank which is eight million all right now it's projected you know this investment there's different hold periods so it's actually projected for a five-year hold and they projected the annual rental income to be 1.2 million dollars now the syndication is structured as an llc with again general partners they're responsible for managing the property you and i the limited partners we're we're responsible for providing the majority of the capital. So as in this situation, as an investor, you're going to be joining as a limited partner with a hundred thousand dollar investment. And this actually represents a 5% ownership stake of the property. All right. Now that we cover the basics, let's dive into the various phases of this syndication. So the, the second phase is the acquisition and the due diligence. All right. So the first, phase of any syndication is the actual acquisition process. In this case, the general partners, they've identified a promising 200 unit apartment complex located in a growing market with a really strong demand for rental housing. The, the property is currently underperforming. Why is it underperforming? Well, they found out it was underperforming due to poor management, deferred maintenance and below market rents. Now, before moving forward with the acquisition of this property, the general partners, they actually conduct extensive due diligence, including three different areas. Number one is market research, analyzing the local market's demographics, job growth and rental trends to ensure that the property has a strong potential for what it wants to be appreciating or depreciating, it wants to be appreciating, right? It wants to be growing and cash flow. Second, is inspection. Now they're going to go out and they're going to hire a professional inspector to evaluate the property's condition as it sits and then identify any necessary repairs or improvements. And the third area is going to be the financial analysis, reviewing the property's historical financials, their current rent rolls and expense reports to determine its performance. And then more importantly, the potential for profitability. Now, after, after they go out and they complete their due diligence, the general partners, they determine that the property offers a great investment opportunity, and then they decide to move forward with the acquisition, which leads us to the next phase. Now that they've acquired it is the property management and value add improvements. So once the property is acquired, the general partners now turn their attention to improving its performance. They begin by hiring a professional property management company. These people handle the day-to-day -day operations. They address maintenance issues, and then hopefully they'll improve the tenant relations. Simultaneously, the general partners, they implement what's called a value add strategy. That's very popular in the syndication space. And it's actually focused on three different areas. The first one is going to be, they're going to go in and they're going to improve any unit identified by the inspector that needs to be done. You know, they're going to upgrade uh, kitchens, flooring, bathrooms, cabinets, lighting, whatever. In these select units in to command higher rents, and but also it's going to attract more quality uh, tenants. The second is going to be the common area upgrades and enhancements. So revitalizing any shared spaces such as maybe a clubhouse, if there's a fitness center, pool area, 
dog park, anything like that to improve the property's over, overall uh, appeal. And speaking of appeal, the third area is curb appeal. They're going to invest in landscaping, you know, upgrading the landscaping, maybe new signage, exterior lighting. Again, all of this is to create a more inviting atmosphere for prospective tenants. Now, these value add improvements not only increase the property's rental income, but they also contribute to its overall appreciation. The next phase is going to be the cash flow and distribution. So as the property's performance starts to improve, it begins to generate positive cash flow from this rental income. Now, the NOI, or the net operating income, which is actually the rental income minus operating expenses, it actually increases as the property becomes more attractive to tenants and thus the occupancy rates start to go up. Again, you're the limited partner, right? You've got the, the 5% ownership stake and you're actually entitled to a share of this cash flow. So let's say by the end of the second year, uh, remember you do your value add improvements. Most of that's going to happen in the first year. So in this case, by the end of the second year, the property's annual rental income, you know, before it was projected at 1.2 million, but after these improvements, better tenants, higher rents, the annual rental income is actually increased now from 1.2 million to 1.35 million. Again, due to the value add improvements and better management. Now, after accounting for op operating expenses, the, the NOI, the net operating income, remember that's the rental income minus, that's all the income minus the expenses, it's $945,000, all right? That's what the NOI is. Now, again, you've got a what? You have a 5% stake, right? So with your 5% ownership stake in the property, your share of the cash flow is going to be that $945,000 times 5%, 47,250 bucks. Not bad. So the general partners, they distribute this cash flow to you and other limited partners on a quarterly basis. So basically you can just take that and divide it by four. Now it's important to note that the frequency and amount of these distributions, it could vary depending on the syndication's performance and the financial needs. So now we're going to move on to the final part, and that is the, the exit strategy and the profit distribution. Remember, this was a five-year hold. So after a five-year holding period, the general partners decide that now is the right time to sell the property. And then they realize the gains from these value-add improvements and the market appreciation. So the property's value has increased 30% since the initial acquisition, resulting in a sale price. Remember, it started off at $10 million. It's selling for $13 million. All right. So uh, if you want to calculate the profit from the sale, we have to subtract the original purchase price uh, and any outstanding loan balance. And, and, and in this case, it's going to look like this. So again, selling for $13 million, $10 million was the um, original price. Let's see, they, they took out a loan of $8 million. Bucks, so they actually, they, so in this situation, we're going to assume that a million dollars of principal has been paid down over five years. Thus, the $8 million loan is now $7 million, all right? Thus, leaving us a profit of $3 million. Again, as a limited partner with a 5% ownership stake, your share of the profit, you know, the, this is different than distribution, so the profit is when they sell, they make money when they sell. Your share of the profit is going to be the 5% of the profit. Profit's $3 million, 5%. Your share of the profit is $150,000 combined with the cash flow that you received during the holding period, we need to figure out what your total ROI or return on investment would be. Okay, you remember, you had an initial investment of $100,000, right? It started paying you after the second year, 47,250 bucks. So this is how we calculate this. You've got that number year two, you receive, this is this is cash flow. And I'm not, I'm not gonna get into the uh, all the, the different tax benefits that you're going to get. But, but basically the gist of it is they're going to get a cost segregation study. They're going to come in and get that done to get the majority of the depreciation up front in the first few years. Thus, all of that depreciation, that those are passive losses. They're going to go in and offset all this passive income. So you've basically been receiving all of this passive income tax-free. Can you get that in the market? I don't think so. 
That's why the wealthy people invest in real estate. So remember, 47,250, you get that for year two, three, four, and five. Now, again, if you add that up, that's going to be 189,000 bucks that you have received pretty much tax free over the course of five years. All right. And the profit from the sale was 150. So if we add 150 plus $189,000, then we get $339,000. Well, actually, excuse me, the, the, the profit would be here, 150. So the, the total that you're gonna get, adding the distributions to the profit, $339,000, that's your total return. Got it from the $100,000 investment. All right, so the, your $100,000 investment in this syndication has generated a total return of $339,000 over a five-year period. So this demonstrates the potential for strong returns when investing in well-managed syndications, following with a the, with the solid general partner group and a solid value-add strategy. Now, one of the biggest advantages, again, like I just mentioned, investing in these in syndications is something that we just briefly touched on today, and that's taxes. And if you want to learn more about how that works, cost segregation, depreciation, how it can offset your passive income, check out this video.